What's up, y'all? Happy Thursday. I thought it was Friday. Waiting on Ruan to show up. If you guys have any questions, as always, hit me in the Q&A. How you guys doing today? Give me some love. Let's see what we got. Let me make sure we're live on Facebook. Crazy out here. All right. How you guys doing? Drop me some comments, man, in the Q&A down here. Let me know if you guys are alive, awake. Somebody raised their hand. What's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's up? Just going to apologize already. If you haven't noticed in the background, there is a ton of yammering and hammering going on. Uh, there's literally a dude right now pressure washing my roof which sounds like we are under siege, like World War II style. And then I got somebody who's installing a door in the back. What's up, John? And uh, it's just really loud. So we're just going to have to deal with it. That's just what it is. You guys got any questions while we wait for them? What do you guys want to talk about? What's on your mind? The chat is disabled. Chat is disabled. Yeah, we'll just hit the Q&A. All right, so instead of the chat, guys, hit the q and I don't know why the chat is disabled. It's a little bit weird. That's all you guys got? What's up? What can I help you with? Got my full time and attention while we wait for him. Secret to life? No? Okay. We'll just wait in silence then. Yeah, if this boy doesn't join us, just get to look at my face all day. <laughs> just finished module 4.3 30 minutes ago. The blueprint is pure gold, mate. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. I love hearing that. If you want to get on camera and drop us a video testimonial, that'd mean the world to us. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Cool new setup, thank you. This is, uh, my wife and I bought a house uh, a couple of weeks ago. No, I'm sorry, that's a lie, uh, months ago now. <laughs> um, and we've been renovating it. This is this is my new office. We got rid of the, the beautiful condo that we were in, uh, Ruan just joined. Pull them up to panelist. Yeah, we bought this house, um, bought the house uh, in, in June and we've been renovating it slowly and surely and I finally got my office set up. What's up, dude? Oh, hey, sorry. Sorry, my thing was muted. No, it's all good, man. How's everything? I haven't seen you in a while. Things going good, man. Growing steadily, um, staying in my lane. Um, so everything is uh, going good. How about yourself? Is that a nod to you being outside of your lane before? Well, I think I think we were just like, <laughs> not clear of what we wanted to do before. Um, now it's just like gotten a lot clearer. What were you guys doing before? Doing anything for money. <laughs> Actually, I had that. I, it's so crazy. I've been having that conversation so much with people. I did two podcast interviews today and nice. both of them ended up being around, like sent, kind of centered around a lot of these topics. And one of them is just agencies always try and do too much. And it's like a common I don't know where the, like the initial piece of advice came from for like young agencies to be, I think it's like the mindset of like, just get money however you can, instead of being like, no, 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 stay the course, like stay focused, do one thing and be the best in the world at it. And like, if you focus on that, then, then much better things will come. And there's, there's easy ways to make money off of, off of, you know, this, these other requests that come to you too, um, as opposed to trying to build a completely new line of business within a business that you're already struggling to run. So, yep. Yep. Anyways, man, uh, for those that are joining us live on Facebook, a few people here that are live on Zoom and the people that will be watching this in the future, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Ruan? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, my name is uh, Ruan Marino. I've, I've been doing SEO and website design now for about three years. Um, the company that we run is called Developmark. And uh, obviously, thank you for having me on today, Ryan. I appreciate it. I know I've had you on the YouTube channel. I always like getting knowledge directly out of your brain because you've been doing it for a while 
And uh, we've been around for about three years. And um, right now we have a hundred, about a hundred clients and about 15 employees um, full time, uh, which is really good because when we started, obviously I was doing all of the work, but now it's, you know, it's consistent. We're selling the same thing every single time to the, to the customers that we want. And there's little operational friction because of that. Um, so Developmark really focuses on um, local service-based businesses. Um, and we, we basically sell them a campaign where we redevelop their website, we, re we run their Google ads, and we report to them the leads that we get from them on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, and we do really good. I mean, and I, think, and I think what you said before was so accurate. It's like um, not doing too much because you have this capability of you can do anything. And like, just because it doesn't sound super sexy doesn't mean it's not a good way of, you know, just doing. So my team's like, just sell the website, sell the SEO, sell the PVC. That's it. Don't go crazy. And it works, you know, so we have really good results for our local clients um, specifically doing that. Um, about myself, though, I was born in Brazil and uh, I came to the United States when I was four years old. Uh, my dad was a painter and I watched him grow up and just, um, you know, get taken advantage of his entire life for not knowing English. And uh, those things like not having a lot of money definitely motivated me to want to make a lot of money. Um, I want to take our company to 10,000 employees if I can, 100,000 employees if I can, if, it's, if the market's that big. I want to get, be the biggest, you know? So, and that comes from, you know, having a childhood where I wasn't making a lot of money. So I'm a very motivated person, very, just, like, just like you, Ryan, and just like a lot of people watching this, I'm sure. Um, and, and so that's just a little bit about myself. Nice, man. I appreciate you joining us as well. I know you're busy especially if you got a hundred clients. So we have a first question that came in from Marston, just, just so you know, Rowan, I'll be asking my own questions also just kind of fielding them from the sure. field. Um, so he asked, you've only been doing this for three years. How have you managed to get so much knowledge behind you in such a short space of time? Also, you have hundreds of videos, great effort in three years. Um, I, I think it's education is by far the most important thing. And um, you know, when I learn something, I'm, I'm taking what that person's, you know, taken years to learn and I'm learning it by reading a few sentences inside of a book. Um, so I've really just, uh, just tried to get as much education as possible. You know, like you've already invested in the blueprint. It looks like, um, you know, online programs, online education, other people, I can't stop learning. And in fact, it's, it's actually ruining my life because I'm not getting good sleep over it. Right. I don't know if you're the same, but it's to the point where like, you don't want to sleep because there's just too much to learn. Like I'm on YouTube, I'm listening to politics. I'm learning these things. So I'm just taking in so, inf so much information and then I'm applying that information as much as possible in, in, in the real world when it does, once it's like daytime. So I'm actually learning how to sleep better now. And, um, you know, that, those are one of the things I'm overcoming because I just love my phone. I love learning information. But ultimately, it's learning. It's knowing exactly what you want to do and then knowing the people that you can learn from to get to where they are. And then once you're where they are, just keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning because learning immediately cuts off that experience time that you need to get to the next level. So it's either I take three years or I do one year and I learn the right things within that year. So you can really make really big strides if you just know what you want out of life, know the education that you need to get there and just do it every single day. I love that. I'm just going to apologize ahead of time. I have like 30 dudes working in my house. I can already <laughs> hear one of them screaming for me for my attention. I don't hear them. Um, I don't hear them. So if I ask you a question and then get up and leave, just keep going uh, okay. and just completely right. ignore me. Um, so, I mean, talk to me a little bit more. hundred clients is, is quite a bit of clients. Uh, well, I've just got a question from Kat, so I'll let you answer this and let me just go deal with this guy who's screaming for me right now. All right. Uh, all good. Kat asked, how do you decide the one thing that an agency needs to focus on? Well, for us, it was, and that's a really good question, Kat, because there's so much that you can focus on and it's easy to, um, you know, look at all of the different things. But ultimately, the best thing that you really need to focus on in terms of service, um, I would say is probably website design and SEO. And the reason for the website design is because you can really control that customer's experience with your SEO service and Google ad service. So our company doesn't take on any customers unless they're okay with us redeveloping, redesigning, and moving over their website to our management. And if you haven't heard of a website platform called Duda, D-U-D-A, it's what we're using right now. If you go to developmark.com, you can see examples of websites that you make. You can see the themes, they're very similar. And it, they're built for scale. And so when we get a new web, when we get a new project, uh, customer fills out a survey, we pick a template and we edit it and the site's made and we can optimize the title tags, the meta descriptions, all of the SEO stuff on the back end of the website. But ultimately the customer 
feels as if they're getting the website from us, SEO from us, Google ads from us all under one account. And they like, they like it because it causes retention. So in terms of service, I would say the most important thing that an agency can offer my, my style of agency, there's a lot of different styles of agencies. Um, our, our most important thing is websites. So if you go to developmark.com and you scroll, you'll just see websites that we've recently made. And it's so powerful when you talk to a client and they're like, okay, like what's some of the work that you've done? Your websites, literally these websites that you make are literally you're walking and talking sales material and you put your logo at the bottom of them that you made them. So like powered by Weberis, powered by Developmark, you put them at the footer section. So then potential customers check, they see your logo there. They see that you made the website, all their competitors want to work with you. And it's just really a good way of doing that. Now, taking that a step further, every time you build a website, you should be launching a press release that your company partnered with whatever company you sold the website to and that they're, they've redeveloped their website with you. So when somebody searches them, you show up inside of there. And if somebody's on Google alerts for them because they're competitors, they're going to see that you come up and made their website. So it's a good way of get, grabbing it to potential customers and the website, once you manage it, once you host it, once you, you basically take, take management of it, it, your retention rates are going to skyrocket because with just selling Google ads, just selling SEO, just selling email marketing, it's easy for somebody to cancel, but having somebody, getting somebody to cancel when you have their website and you're doing a good job and they're getting leads, they're not going to cancel. Our retention rates are, are extremely high because of that. Yeah. Uh, for the record too, anyone who has trouble managing, um, employees, you should try managing contract. That was my neighbor, by the way, who just was beating at my door telling me that <laughs> one of our contractors, Doug left tire marks in his lawn. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Uh, buddy? <laughs> so annoying. Uh, Typical yeah. Contractor. The joys of the joys of being a homeowner. Um, Anyway, sorry. So I'm back. So, so those are all really good points. And actually I, I do a lot of, con we're doing more and more selling of the blueprint into uh, design development agencies because of basically what you just said. We look at building a website almost as a tripwire, right? It's, it's yeah. usually a short term two to three month sprint, especially for a small business where, you know, we're talking, I don't know what you charge, but anywhere from like five to $25,000 for a website, right? Um, we charge $2,500. Well, I'll explain that in a second. I'll explain yeah, second. I would. I would love to unpack that more. I'm sure you've got a just a beastly process around that templates, the whole nine. Um, yep. But yeah, you look at that as as a tripwire, and then building that relationship, building you know, getting getting comfortable with them, and then SEO or AdWords, either one is just the easiest upsell. It's like, hey, you have this now. Like, you need you need eyeballs, man. Like, I've I've got something for that too. So, so when you sell. Like, how do you determine which one to do? Or do you just have a package that makes them do SEO and, and AdWords at the same time? Yeah, so we have, we have two customers. One is one time, they just want a website, which is fine, we'll do that. Um, two is, our, we call it a campaign. And so, we don't, so when we sell the customer, we don't call it a website sale, we, we call it an activation. And so in marketing, as you know, um, you know, to start any campaign, you have to do go through what's called activation, which is the setup, the onboarding, all of that information. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll say, okay, Ryan's plumbing service. Um, you know, you want to do marketing. We're going to charge you 2,500 bucks upfront for a website with 30 content rich pages. We're not going to make a lot of money on the upfront, but we're going to put the person into a year contract. And then we're going to basically charge a little retainer, a lot of money in AdWords. And a combination of the SEO, beautiful website design, PPC, a lot of PPC spend, that phone is going crazy. I'm telling you, anything local, you follow the Developmark way of doing it, the phones will go crazy. And so we're not making a billion dollars, but we're not focused on getting rich off of one customer. We want, we want when another plumbing company inquires, here's 30 plumbing companies we work with. And that type of volume and that type of uh, it's not even like it's less margin because once you set up the website, turn on the Google ads campaign, customers extremely happy. They have the chat going, they have the phone calls coming in, they have the form submissions coming in all day and they're getting notified of it because of the way we set up in call rail, uh, form tracking, chat tracking, et cetera. If you guys are using local chat, check out N gauge for local chat for uh, local business. I found them to be the best. And what happens is, is they're getting all of these leads. We're making a thousand bucks a month, let's say. 3,000 of their money is going to Google ads, or even we're making 500 a month and we're spending 3,000 Google ads, customer never cancels. And since we sell the same thing every time during that six week process of when we're building out this campaign's activation and we're charging 2,500 to 3,500, 6,500, depending on how large the site is, our team has made the site map, written the content, 
done design, done the development, set up the Google ads campaign, set up the Facebook ads campaign, and we turn it all on at week six, once the client approves the campaign. And then from there, it's literally just following up with the customer and reporting their leads and sales through their CRM if they have one. If they don't, um, we're in the process of building an agency dashboard that actually stores our customers' sales and leads and marketing data for other agencies and white label in our platform um, to do that. So um, really, Ryan, what it's like is, you know, it's a six-week turnaround. During that six weeks, we're going to make your site, write all your content, or rewrite your content if you have it. Uh, do your PPC campaign and then launch your site. And then once it's launched, we're charging a small monthly retainer for all of those services, management, SEO, this and this, and we're running Google ads. Now, if you're talking about customers that you work with, right? Like, cause you worked with some bigger companies, right? We don't work with, um, you know, like big brands in a sense. We work with local, big local service companies that may be doing 30, $50 million. You know, these are like franchise plumbing companies, those types of businesses, um, that doesn't work for businesses with well-established websites that don't want to move their website, right? That just won't work. That's why we stick with local people come to us. We go, we have to redevelop your site. We have to do this. And we show them how it's worked for other people. And our close rates are very high, but that's because we make a, the ability to work with us very affordable. I can't go in somewhere and tell somebody 20 grand for a plumbing website, right? I'm going to tell them 2,500 bucks. I know I'm going to make money over the lifetime of that relationship rather than trying to bang them out, you know, in the first, uh, upfront charge. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I want to have you on because I knew you did local and you know what I push a lot in the blueprint is, is larger retainers. But at the end of the day, what I also try and show people is that there's no right or wrong way to do this, right? right. It, it's really just a matter of understanding which levers to pull depending on the model that you do, right? So uh, there's a lot of folks in here that ask me a lot about local SEO. It's not something that we really do at our agency. But what I basically tell them is that basically what you've got figured out, right? If you want it, if you want, like, there's nothing wrong with charging smaller retainers. It just becomes a numbers game in terms of getting more leads in the door, which is what you've got figured out, right? Yeah. Where people struggle is if you, if you go on the lower end of retainers and you don't have the lead flow to support it, then you're going to be dead in the water. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, let's talk a little bit more about kind of your lead generation strategy. It sounds like you've got kind of like a nice flywheel set up now, but when you were first getting started, how were you able to get enough leads in the door to support that business model. Yeah. I mean, so right now our only challenge of growth is lead generation. And so we're getting a lot of leads, which is good, but like, that's what we need right now to grow qualified leads of customers that we want to work with. Um, so we're getting quite a bit and we're closing about, I don't know, nine accounts a month, which is good. It's a good pace to be on. But before I had this structure, we weren't closing much because the pitch was really, it just, it, it just something was missing. You know, it was, uh, we're going to give us, give us access to your website. We're going to do your SEO. You're going to get leads. And then like, they would always cancel, but keep their website company. And I was always like, there's something here that I'm missing. And that's what I made that mental shift of, I need to take over this site. So the beauty of the lead generation strategy that we have now is, um, if when you talk to us, the, the, the beauty of that wholesale, Ryan, is you get to really show your potential customers 10 examples of what you've recently done because you're going after lower retainers, you're going after lower upfronts, and you're kind of playing the long-term game. But for people that, you know, can't have, don't have the leads to do that, you know, that's where um, landing these bigger SEO contracts, um, which I can't do because I find myself personally doing, you know what I mean? Like if, if a big company wants to hire us, I'd have to be doing the work. I don't want my team doing it. It's just not in the process. But to, when you're starting out, when I started out, the best way that I was getting leads was I was basically just recording videos of what I've done for existing clients and then I published them on YouTube. Um, and then I would send them off to people that maybe wanted to see them. Um, so what I remember what I initially did was I would like put a video up on YouTube about like a tree service doing SEO. Right. And then I would email, uh, you know, competitors in that, in the, the state, right. Not in the city. Cause that's just too close. But I would email people and I'd be like, hey, here's what we're doing for this guy. He's in your location. He's near your area. I um, mean, we would get sales from that through cold email like that. Um, there's something really uh, enticing to a business owner about you working with their competitor. I don't know what it is. We've seen calls. Literally, we didn't even tell a price and they already want to sign up because they know we work with a competitor and they don't have to be a competitor. That's right there as long as it's a company that they know about. And so um, with that being said, that's why when you put your logo on the footer section of any website, I know you put like powered by Webris. I think when you put that logo there, it, you know, competitor is going to look at your competitor's website. They're going to want to know what agency is doing it. 
and they want to know more about that competitor's business internally. So they're going to talk to the agency because the agency knows everything. And you've got to be careful with NDAs there. But ultimately, the, uh, the goal is to get as much as we can in, in wholesale so that it can provide us with better close rates and better lead gen on the, the, the lead generation side. But initially, it was a lot of videos. Um, you know, I didn't think these videos were going to do well. I didn't think anybody was going to care about any of my videos ever. And that wasn't the case. There's millions of people out there searching for a specific situation that you've just solved or a problem that you're facing right now and they're looking for the solution. And if they find you on YouTube, they're gonna spend hours looking at your video rather than two seconds visiting your website. And that type of relationship just doesn't, there's nothing that can beat that. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's funny, I, I literally just had a sales call before this for the blueprint and you know, the, the person was asking me about kind of different lead generation strategies. And what I told them was basically a similar strategy to that, but I simplify it. Can you hear me by the way? I know it's hella loud back here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I um, hold on one second. Let me just, let me just pause that thought and I'll just ask you a question that popped up. Okay. Uh, it's more about the operations of things and I'll meet myself. It says, is your team doing outreach for your local clients or are you outsourcing your link building? In other words, how, how do you handle link building for your local clients? Okay. Yeah. It's a, that, that's certainly a really good question. Um, so, we don't really do much link building for most customers because when we sell SEO, we're selling, we're pretty much targeting their organic location. So a lot of businesses we consider in our terminology, their organic location is wherever they have a physical address location. So for example, right? Um, it wouldn't be Miami. It would be Bay Harbor, Florida instead. So it's a, you know, it's wherever their physically address is, is, and we'll rank them there. But generally that doesn't require us to do any link building, proper page optimization works. Now for the clients that are in these more competitive areas that want these Dallas's, they want these Miami's, they want these New York cities, they want these larger uh, keyword phrases. Um, I've actually been able to uh, use YouTube click-through rate optimization and sh when we show our clients on YouTube, they actually rank higher. So we've been doing that, it's been working pretty well. So we'll basically like do a tutorial on our YouTube channel. And because people go from YouTube to our client site and they search on Google, I don't know what it is, but ultimately we get number one rankings for these very difficult to rank cities for these, also these services. Um, so that's the other piece of it. But in terms of link building in our campaigns, we're basically promised the directory cleanup. So we use a tool like Yext that actually keeps the customer on Yext platform and keeps the data consistent. If the customer breaks our contract or if the customer leaves, Obviously, we cancel that Yext account because they're not paying us for monthly service anymore. Um, and so with that being said, that's why I like Yext. A lot of people don't like Yext. They don't like Uber all. They don't like these directory management services because, um, you know, they're selling you kind of like a cloud access. And if you don't want to use them anymore, they take you off the cloud access. That works perfectly with our business model, to be honest with you, because we cloud access their SEO pretty much. And if they cancel, they'll still keep the SEO results. They just won't have our ongoing management support with it. Um, but we don't do any link building in terms of those lines. We let the website and the Google ads kind of lead with that because for us, like Ryan's has this system, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and I just don't have that built into my agency just yet to do that as a service. I would need somebody for that or outsourcing for it. Um, and at this time, we just aren't doing it. We're finding, we're having really good results just focusing on the website, the local SEO and the Google ads. And eventually they rank just because of how proper the things are done. Most local areas, that's the other great part about local SEO is it's not hard to rank. So clients see success, they're very happy with you. you, you they're getting what they're paying for and you keep your client. Last thing I wanna do is have this gigantic project and the, that client fires us and I've already made predictions inside of my business financially. And now I'm, I'm down 10 grand a month or I could just have 10 clients at a thousand, be down a thousand from one client canceling. And it just makes me feel a lot more comfortable that way. Um, but ultimately, we, 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 don't, we don't do much link building in that aspect, um, only because we've seen great enough results just doing the, the, the strategy that we're doing now. Yeah, I think that's really smart. I, I think that, you know, I know Stephen very well now, but I think that a lot of folks overthink link building and they think it needs to be a, a priority instead of a, like a, a secondary item, right? Um, and in reality, you, most of the clients that you want to be working with probably don't need too many links, whether they're local or they're just an authoritative brand or they've got 
a PR team, what have you, you know, I, I, it's tough to say that because especially now, like you take the leads where you can get them, you can't be beggars and choosers, but you know, we actually have moved to a completely outsourced link building system ourselves at our agency. Um, we very rarely do outreach just because of the level of effort that it takes. Um, and link building has really just become its own industry. You know, it, it's, it's almost been like, if a company like really, really needs links, like they're that length efficient, we're like, you don't need links, you need PR. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the links that we will get you are not going to help you out. You have no authority. Uh, You're trying to rank for a very competitive keyword. This is, you don't need SEO links. You just need a better, you need a stronger brand presence online and PR is probably a better move. Um, That's a lot, that's a lot of the ways that we push folks there. Um, But what I was saying about the content before was that the way that, the way that I try and teach people to think about lead generation and content is really just the fact that just like you were speaking about with your video is putting like everything comes down to whether it's SEO advertising, what have you, it's putting together some sort of asset that your audience has an interest in and then figuring out the right way to get that in front of them. Right. So step one is what is that asset, right? It's helping them understand how to do SEO for their landscaping, what, whatever that may be, right. You put together that concept with concept piece of content, whether it's a video, a podcast, uh, a blog post, uh, shit, even an email, right. It doesn't really matter. That's the asset. And then really just understanding how to get it in front of them, whether that's cold outreach, like you were doing, whether it's advertising, um, whether it's in, Bound SEO traffic, really simplifying it to that system and understanding which works best for you is really what all of lead generation comes down to for, for agencies, right? And then it's just a matter of figuring out again, how you can scale that up uh, and create that inbound flywheel. So you don't have to put all of your time and attention into stressing over leads. Um, Skylar asked, I recall that you use Duda for your client's websites. Are there anything with Duda that you found you dislike and or any of your clients has it to switch from WordPress to Duda? That's a, such a good question because naturally the number one thing that gets asked when they work with us is, do they own their website? Is it WordPress? Um, is it Wix? What platform is it? Um, some people are skeptical coming onto our platform, quote unquote, because, um, they've never heard of Duda. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And and at that point, it's just educating the client, um, you know, that here's the websites that we've made on Duda before. It, you do own it. We don't own it. Yes, we host it. Yes, we manage it. But at the end of the day, I can export it to your account if you were to cancel. And then just letting the customer know, you know, upfront what the contract is, what the terms of service are. We don't give our clients any access to the website. Absolutely any. We don't give them access to the website. We don't give them access to the Google ads account. We just don't. We just too much problems have happened before when, when people try to do that. And so um, in our terms and conditions, we basically just state Um, here's why we don't grant access unless you're not a customer. And the reason for that is because we're doing all this hard work, anything rewritten or or undone for that, or any things where you go to an old backup and all our work gets erased is on you. And we don't want that for you. So, um, but due to one of the things that I really dislike about it and I don't like about it is at this time, it's not responsive. Um, but that's just an agency ego thing and Duda will be responsive within the next 12 months. They just got a $20 million funding. So, Um, you know, that's just an agency ego thing. If you ask an average 45 year old that's looking for dentures and they're looking for a dentist on their phone, they have no idea what responsive even means. They're not stretching their screen, how a a web designer or SEO is, they're not doing that. And so that is one of the big cons of Duda. And we, we know how to make it responsive, but it's just too much development work right now. So we just keep them unresponsive. But in the near future, when Duda does go ahead and make every single website responsive, um, it's going to, it's going to be everything that WordPress is and beyond. Um, the time it takes you to make a website on WordPress takes me a third of the time. It may be even a fourth. I may be even be able to say a fourth. And that's because they use something called dynamic page structure, which allows you to use a Google sheet to create hundreds of pages at a time directly on the website. So with us, when we build out a site map and we, you know, with a site map, we're putting the name of the site map, the, the, the navigation, the URL, you know, we, we have a system where that integrates with Duda and all of those pages are created with our URL structure, with our page titles, with our meta descriptions, with the images we want, with the page template that we set up. And then our team just goes in and edits the content, replaces the content with what we order from a company called Verblio. So, um, you know, in terms of structure for local, in terms of scalability, in terms of managing all your clients in one dashboard, in terms of, this is the biggest reason why we use Duda. I, this is my favorite reason, Okay. Every time we get a customer, I'm not telling a web designer to learn a new platform. You know what I mean? Because we take over the site every single time, they only work with Duda. So that means we don't have the learning curve. The customer doesn't waste time. We don't have to hire an expert at Elementor. We don't do that. We just don't play that game. If you want to work with us, you have to come on Duda. If you don't, 
that's fine. We'll talk to you later once you're ready. So um, for us, the operational friction of having one content management system to work with is, is really, really good. And it's going to set us up for a good scale. Yeah, I think, uh, Skylar, I think also just kind of reading between the lines, Ruan just also really knows who his customer is. Right. And the customers that he's targeting and working with probably don't know the difference between WordPress and Duda anyways, right? Absolutely what they care not. about is a website that yeah. looks good. And I think more importantly than that too, is it looks good to them because mm -hmm. design is something that's very subjective mm -hmm. and what looks good to us more on like the millennial side in terms of like all the flashy shit that like my dad doesn't care about that. You know what I'm saying? My dad wants <laughs> to access his information easily. That's all right, he cares right. about, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think part of that Skylar is if you are trying to migrate to a platform like Duda, I mean, I know who your clients are. I don't know if it'd be as seamless as a transition as it is for, for Ruan. But I think, again, the underlying point that Ruan's trying to make is that selecting a platform that is easily scalable with your, like, I agree, WordPress is a pain in the ass. If you're going to do WordPress websites, you got to charge like at least 40 grand. You just have to, if you're going to do yeah. custom work, like you just have to. Um, and that's okay if it fits in with your process and the clients that you're currently targeting and working with. Another really good one is Webflow that uh, is picking up a lot of, of momentum and kind of like the codeless movement. I've heard really good things. Even um, my UX designer, uh, who's done all of, pretty much all of our work, who's amazing with WordPress, uh, has pretty much migrated to Webflow because of that. He's like, it's just faster and it looks as good. So <laughs> why, you know, like I think we're, a, a lot of us are pat, like I actually think a lot of the reason why people are stuck on WordPress, I use WordPress, so I'm not talking shit, is right. almost like the marketing and SEO side. It's like, well, WordPress is good for SEO. So a lot of these companies right. are like, okay, like we can figure that out. It's not too difficult. And Webflow apparently has that figured out. And it's just, it's supposedly really slick. Um, we got a couple questions coming in on Facebook, Ruan. Uh, my, Milan, Milan, I apologize for uh, butchering your name there. Uh, which topics most uh, will most appeal to potential large clients during the presentation? Um, a comp, uh, for example, a conference or webinar. He says, I want to... I know I want to avoid the topics of how to learn SEO because I will only address, it will only address beginners. What, what are good topics? I guess he's asking what are good topics to target more of like an advanced type of client base? Yeah. And, and the advanced type of client base, they're so good because they understand the value of what you're doing. And you know, it's like, I, I think Josh Nelson said this and are you familiar with Josh Nelson, Ryan? He said, he said something that like really, really hit with me because I went through his training program. Um, and he basically said like, you know, some companies literally just aren't ready and you shouldn't waste your energy and time trying to get them and convince them. Usually the advanced people know what they're talking about. They know what they want and they're not going to waste their own time talking to you. So as long as your ideas are good enough, they're going to hire you if they think that you're smarter than them because they're trying to save time. So we have business owners that know everything, you know, like, you know what I mean? Know it alls. And, and, and it's okay that they know it all because they learn and, and they've spent time doing it. And those customers are usually very successful for us because we know more than them and they appreciate that. They appreciate the counsel, right? They're not looking for just general advice. They want counsel on how to move forward better than what they would have thought of. And so with an advanced type of client, you've got to give advanced type of information. And that advanced type of information can't be, we had a customer, Fujitsu, right? This huge 5G networking company. And they come to us and, and we're competing against another agency that's uh, redoing some of the work that they're doing. And the agency's best advice to them was redo the title tags and redo your meta descriptions. And look, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, you should definitely redo your title tags, meta descriptions. That's, that's SEO beginners. You know what I mean? Anybody in YouTube will tell you to do that. And so they, they were turned off by that because this is, these are people who are doing SEO inside of their own company full time forever. And for them to hear that type of advice, it immediately turned them off. So if you want to get the more advanced types of clients, you've got to have the more advanced uh, 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 mindset of how to do the SEO creatively. So cr look at a creative way and approach to do SEO and start making content or start telling people about your creative way of doing it. For us, it's page testing, it's YouTube traffic that we're sending. It's all of these other little things that other agencies simply just can't do right now. Like there's not a lot of agencies that can make a video on YouTube and get 3000 views and then get all these people going searching the keyword on the site. And I do it very strategically. And you've got to look at these super simple ways of creatively doing the SEO that's going to make you stand out. Also, you have to have an advanced methodology of doing it, or you're not going to attract the advanced type of customer that, want, that, that wants to do SEO, you know, offshore the SEO to an SEO company. So learning more is always very, very valuable. So I stay up very late. I get up very early and I research competitors that are doing this at a much larger scale than I am. And I'm kind of like just picking down what they're doing so I can implement inside of my agency 
Um, and you know, there's a fine line there from copying, but you definitely want to look and see what other people are offering in your space. And that's why it's good to have some idea of who it is that you're targeting. So when you say advanced, I mean, I personally think of so many different things, but if you say advanced and you want to target medical hospitals and you want places with several locations and you want to help them rank higher for cancer treatment, those are, that's what we're interested in it because these are businesses with several locations. It is advanced knowledge that you need. A hospital is not just going to hire anybody. And then you say, we're going to charge you 250 per location. Hospital has 30 locations. Now you have this gigantic SEO retainer. You have their website. They're never going to leave. Um, so that's one of the things that you've just got to have a real advanced uh, understanding of their industry. And you have to have really good tactics for them to even hear you out because they want to hear ideas that are better than theirs. Yeah, I, I think just piggybacking off that too, I, I agree with the, the comment and the question that a lot of like SEO topics are just very rudimentary because I think Ruin will be the first to attest to this. The, the most volume is going to come from more of the beginner level, right? Um, so I actually, we've actually gone through this ourselves. We're planning a lot of new content for next year. We're actually relaunching our service under a different type of model. That's neither here nor there. But basically what we're trying to understand is you know, we ha our website gets a lot of traffic. We have a lot of content on it, but it's clearly not the right content because we know it's not converting into the type of leads that we want, right? So we really had to go back to the drawing board and, and instead of looking at like keyword planner to get content ideas, you have to have conversations with your customers. Like if, and, and I think part of that too is really understanding if you wanna work with bigger companies, then look at the makeup of that company. Like you're not talking to CEOs, right? You're not, you're like, you're not, and you're not talking about beginner topics, obviously. Like for the most part, a larger company is going to have a marketing manager. So like what problems are they having and what might they be searching for or what type of content that can you create that will help them out? I mean, just some topics that come to mind and some of the things that we're working on are things like, you know, why, why is my website losing traffic or like how, how to evaluate, how to evaluate the performance of your current SEO agency, right? Even that in itself, like, understanding who our customers are and understanding after talking to leads for the last 10 years, the customers that we work with are usually working with an agency at that time, right? So for the most part, they're going through the evaluation process, they're going through the firing process, and they're looking for information about that, or we can just get ahead of that and put that information in front of them, right? So again, just really understanding less of kind of about the keywords from an SEO point of view that we're doing for clients and really understanding more just kind of like what problems are they having and what type of content, content can I make that doesn't have to be like the ultimate guide to keyword research or SEO that they don't, they're not looking for, right? It's going to generate traffic, but probably not generate leads. Um, mm -hmm. That's more, that's an approach that we're taking as well. Like really, really understanding again, like who is that persona and like, they probably aren't even like our, our, our persona might not even be searching Google for these things. We just have to put it in front of them. Right. And it goes back to that like asset promotion thing. So it's a, just a different approach. Um, mm -hmm. Just questions that you have to ask just different questions. We got another question from John, excuse me, from John. He says, uh, as a freelancer, time efficiency is very important. I follow Ryan and David closely to get ideas for automating my systems. What are some of the most important automation templating Ruan has done with his agency? Yeah. I mean, so, so much of our agency is templated and I think it's important because um, you know, you, you, the more time that you can save and get the same result is, is obviously the more that you can scale. And um, we automate a few different things. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, Ryan. Do you mind giving me access? Hold on one second. Sure. I just want to show you, yeah, you know, our sites, our sites look super custom. Um, but at the end of the day, they're not that custom. Um, and so like, this is an example of a customer that we have right now. Um, that's ranking number two for Dallas plumbing and this company right here, Texas green plumbing, you know, although the website looks extremely, uh, you know, it looks good. It looks like a look good local site ranks high, gets a ton of leads. Um, and he loves it. He gives, you know, raving customer now inside of the editor though. Right. So this is, this is where we edit the website. <clears throat> really all this site is, is a few sections and the text has been changed. So this entire website has been thought of over and over again, but we have, since we're using sections inside of Duda, um, we can basically, uh, you know, edit this website. If you go to the plumbing page, you can see how the format looks, right? You have the keyword, you have the H tag, you have the navigation, and then you have text broken up nicely. So it's easy to read form on the right side, call to action, et cetera. Now, if you go to home and office, um, and you go to gas line to repair installation, well, guess what? It's exactly the same format. We're just duplicating this page over and over again, but changing the text, but to the homeowner, this is the person that's coming to this website. They think it's this extremely custom website and it's a premium brand because it looks so good. Whereas to us, we're just basically 
going into the pages section of our thing. And then we're literally just taking like, let's say this hydro jetting uh, page right here. And we're just duplicating this page with the template that we've already created. So I could literally click duplicate and I can name this, let's say leak detection example, cause I don't want to publish this. Um, and I can duplicate this. And when I do that, it's going to keep this entire page design. My team's just going to go in and change the text. So you don't have to be a website designer to do what we do to maximize SEO results inside of a website. And so with that being said, as you can see, now I have this page, I can literally just change this to leak detection. And then I can change this contents inside of here. I can say, never get a leak again or whatever, whatever your content is. And then you can replace that inside of here. And now you have a brand new page targeting a separate keyword that you have content for. And we do this very, very fast. So, um, and then with all of this too, we have every single website that we've built inside of Duda. They allow you to do this thing called team sections. So every single website that we've built, we have sections for the different companies that we've done work for. So for example, this is a, this is one of our moving companies. If I wanted to add this into this page, you can see how this section's already created that we took time to create. I can simply add the section side up here and then start changing out the information side up here to make it relevant for that business. Right. Um, and, and this is extremely scalable because now we're getting to the level to where we have designers just designing sections all day. So that means that when we hire a junior designer, they can literally just go in, follow our format. All of our sections are broken up into the format that's proven for a website to work. There's the hero, there's the features about any uh, accreditations, text blocks, tabs, all of this stuff is inside of here. And if we wanted to add a section, I could literally just click this, save, you know, and then start editing from there. Um, so Duda has really helped us with automations and making things really scalable um, by basically just selling the same thing every time. Um, it would just because you're a website designer doesn't mean you have to make all of this crazy custom design. You just got to make a design that's for, that's work, that's proven to work, that has all the XDO recommendations, has call to actions, has the nice page design, has the proper text padding, has all of these basic things. And Google has a great design program that you can go through that teaches you a lot of the basics, but ultimately uh, automating, not automating, nothing's automated, but um, for us, automating and streamlining the process of what we do, the same thing every time has been critical to our team's success and our growth. That's why we don't lose employees. We don't lose customers. Um, we obviously will lose some, you know, we're not perfect, but it's because employees are, know what's expected of them. They do very similar work every single day and they're happy because they're not stressed out about all this custom stuff that they have to do. I know a lot of agencies that sell these big custom projects and the owners are stressed. They're super stressed all day. And you know, me, it's like, yeah, I, I work with a plumber that's doing a million a year and yeah, I make way less money, but ultimately I'm a lot happier just because we're selling the same thing every time. That doesn't mean every site's the same, but our process is generally the same for every customer. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's something that WordPress is not good at. Um, like you basically have to build your own thing to get that type of, it's just, it's a whole thing, but it is, it's always refreshing. It's, it's uh, like, I've, been doing these interviews now for about a year and it's 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 crazy like like again like I said there's no right or wrong way to kind of build your agency you just but the things that the things that remain true are 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 the same for for everyone we had a guy on his name is um he has an agency he only works with private injury attorneys Chris Chris Dreyer and oh, um yep. You know, Chris, yeah, Chris is a good yeah. dude. And uh, I don't know if you know his story, but the point is that he has like 20 clients and he's doing like 5 million in revenue, <laughs> like just stupid amount. Right. Um, but you know, like the things that remain true, even though his business model is probably the opposite of yours, just in terms of like low volume, high retainer, uh, everything is different. Long sales cycle, short sales cycle. Right. Yeah. But the things that are the same are, are processes are, you know, are, are templatizing are selling the same are literally taking your product, I'm sorry, taking your service and turning it into a product as best as you can. Like it's, that is something that if you ask anyone, even the folks who do custom work, like we technically do custom SEO, but like I'm telling you, we don't do custom SEO. We do the same thing over and over again. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we're literally just taking the same deliverables and just customizing them. That's our level of custom work, but it's, it's right. literally, we do six things and that's it. Um, and we're working on stripping that down even more to just do four things. That's what we're like getting ready to launch. Um, so it's always, I, I, it's, it's, it's just one of the, the blessings about being in a position to interview folks just like you do is just, 
you know, hearing the common themes that are, that are the same in success with this, in this industry. And that's really it like process, process, um, you know, repeatable things, uh, you know, stripping away waste, focusing on things that work, not doing too much. Um, it's they're, they're oversimplified concepts, but like, that's really what it comes down to. You know, people just tend to do things that are, that are just way too far down in the weeds that just don't really move the needle and they end up getting stuck. They forget that this is the business and it's not a tactic, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so it's always good to hear that. Um, we're coming up on the end of our time here, Ruan. I appreciate you joining us. Is there anything else that, that I didn't ask that, that you want to, that you want to pile on top? No, I mean, so I think, I think with, with, with Chris, uh, Chris Dreyer, uh, Dwyer, uh, same, same formula, get the website, you know, he's lawyers, right? Strictly attorneys. P um, only PI attorneys too. Yeah. Only PI he's niched PI is a huge ROI if you can get them good cases. So yeah, that makes sense how he has less clients. Um, where we're like, we don't want any attorneys and we want this specific niche. So the, the concept though is still the same. And it will remain the same for local until the end of that time. Um, and, you know, the last thing that I would say is, you know, a lot of customers and a lot of agencies have issues with customers staying on board. And that's because they don't give them any client responsibility. And when you give a clear expectation of content responsibility, um, then they're going to feed you data and information on a monthly basis that you can use to keep enhancing their SEO efforts. We used to write custom content on a monthly basis for our customers, blogs, content pages, et cetera. Now what we've done is if we've embedded the actual a survey on their website, every time they get a job or they complete a job, because remember we, we target home service companies and dentists and stuff like that. Every time they get a new patient, a new job, their assistant uploads that job, what they did for that job, images to that job and our dynamic text building tool automatically creates a page on the website for that location SEO optimized. So um, the more content that they give us, we call it widget content the more they're going to rank on Google search results. So we have companies with 500 location pages, all with custom content, with custom images, with reviews from the customers in there. And we didn't create any of the work. They just submit it on their end. So really it's just figuring out and, and you work with, with automation expert, you know what I mean? So at, at that point, it's just figuring out like, what is it that you want to do? Chris Dreyer, I want to work with lawyers. I want to sell websites, SEO and Google ads. I want to make them more money. That's his definite purpose. He can start automating. You really can't start getting to work until you have that definite pur purpose. There's so many things you could do. Just get a green on one thing and then go from there, create that clarity because Ryan's done this. I know I've done this where you do it for a year, you do something for two years and then you're like, that's not what I want to do. And then all of that work that you've done, it matters because you learn stuff, but it's not what you ultimately you want to get to your goal. So it's always good to just understand what is it that you want to get to, and then you can figure out automation. But other than that, I just want to talk about client responsibility and, and, and how important it is to have an engaged customer that feeds you information that can help you with your job. Um, so creating these short little surveys and basically it's like, um, upload your new jobs. And, and it's cool too, because when they upload it, it texts the customer, emails them for reviews. So now they're doing review generation getting clients to be responsible for how their performance is going to go is going to allow you to have more freedom with your life. And that's why we use Duda. Um, so with that, with that being said, Ryan, I thank you for taking the time to have me on. Um, always a good you know, conversation with you. Congratulations on the house. Uh, I didn't know that you bought the house. I thought you were still in the uh, penthouse. <laughs> yeah, no, you're just seeing old videos. Yeah. I've been, I've been, we, we moved in here about uh, three weeks ago. The construction was supposed to be done, but Man, like I said, it, you think it's challenging running an agency and managing your staff? <laughs> I implore you to try and manage some contractors. Uh, oh, just like the just that. like the guys that just like the guy I'm telling you, like the plumbers are tough, man. And it's crazy yeah, yeah. too. Like I now now I know a lot about the home service. I didn't know shit about the home service industry, industry before, but like it's <laughs> it's it's it's. I mean, I, I give you props too because I, I'm sure it's different when they're paying you. It's different, but like trying to get these guys to fucking show up on time. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a whole thing, let alone, like I said, I mean, every five minutes they're like, T -t 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 -t, Ryan, I need your help. I'm like, I don't build doors. Like what like, am I supposed to be expert? Like, <laughs> yeah, like what am I, I'm paying you to do this? Like, what do I know about this? Um, yeah, but this is, we're going to a wedding tomorrow. And then when we get back next week, it should, I mean, we did a lot of work. It's a 3000 square foot house and we pretty much gutted and redid the whole thing. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so I appreciate it. Um, again, I, I really appreciate you coming and take the time and, and doing this. Um, give a final plug, man. You got a course too. go ahead, plug your course, plug your site, plug everything. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to plug my analytics dashboard, um, only because that's what we're really focusing on. So 
we have an issue with mo like most agencies with reporting and you know it's not not that it's an issue it's just we need to cut down that time we spend on reporting um so we're actually creating a um a analytics platform called splashdash and splashdash.io is going to basically allow you to if you're using duda and if you're using uh analytics and you're using call tracking and you're using form tracking um, it's going to allow you to basically CRM all your customers' data and put all of the most important information and integrations inside of the tool. Um, but ultimately, you know, if you, if you're, we're going to charge, a site's going to be free. So if you go to splashdash.io, it doesn't hurt you to test out the beta. Um, so we, your first site is going to be free forever. And this is going to be a tool, and I'm going to show it to you here in a second. This is going to be a tool where you can actually input, input your client's uh, uh, information, uh, input custom description, you, the logo that you pick up here, it says splash dash. That'll be your own custom agency logo. And then the, the, the dashboard will be basically made up of what we called cards. So like, for example, this is an analytics card. Um, this is a new versus returning visits card, any analytics that you can pull, you can put into this custom dashboard and it's really, really, really seamless. So like, it's very responsive. So like if I wanted sessions by browser bigger, I can make it bigger. And then, you know, there's maps for all of the different types of cards. So we have different versions of looking at these cards. Um, and ultimately the goal of this is to offer agencies and our own company. Uh, and you can see it's very disorganized right now because I haven't edited it, but um, offering agencies the ability to white label their reporting with their clients. So for example, I can go into here and I can change this branding to like, let's say this purple and I can update this and then all of the reporting will go into purple and you can basically add as many projects as you want here. Obviously with the more projects that you add, the more that you're gonna pay, but ultimately this is going to be a one-stop shop for the customer to log in for your agency's analytics, see their call tracking, see all the form tracking, see all the chats that they've gotten. Um, very similar to how you're seeing keywords right here. All of the customer's conversion data is going to show up inside of here and you can add cards. So if you click add card, you'll be able to integrate over a hundred integrations. And if you want to add, let's say inside of Google search console or analytics, you want to add a specific metric. Um, let's say sessions by or top pages. Um, you can then go in here and basically add top pages and the, it'll go into here and you can edit this however you see fit. So um, this is going to be a tool that we're really going to be focusing on in the near future. Um, and this is something that is going to be our next step of increasing not only our customer experience, but also retention is critical here because you, you never want a customer asking you for reporting. You want them to just be able to go to your agency.com slash login and see white label reporting designed beautifully, just like this and splash dash. You're going to be able to put in your customer's email and it's going to send them rank tracking updates. It's going to send them analytic insights. It's going to send them movements, positive movements. We, we, we listen to the SEO community. It's only going to send them positive movements and uh, all of these good analytics are gonna tell them every time they get a phone call, every time they get a form, it's gonna have your agency on it. Ryan, our customers, when they see their phone ringing all day and it says Develomark, our agency's logo on it, it they, they never call us. We haven't talked to some customers for six months and we're like, hey, we wanna go out to dinner and they're like, dude, we're just too busy. We're getting a ton of leads. Thank you, we're good. And that's because they see Develomark for every web lead that they get. So other pro of having the website is you can pretty much account every, every lead that comes from the website as your agency name, as long as you nice. do it the right way. So splashdash.io, that is my shameless plug. Go check it out, sign up for a beta and you can use one site for free. It's coming out November 12th for beta. So it's almost there. And then you'll be able to track one project inside of there for completely free. Nice. Love it. Yeah. It looked really slick, man. I'm excited for you and uh, love seeing your growth and uh, I'll see you around the old internet, man. I appreciate you joining us. You got it, Ryan. Have a wonderful right. day. Take care, brother. Bye.